Hey guys, here is C at 69 USD SNG and I'll take a closer look at the tournament I played recently. So this is a $3 tournament. So might be very interesting for you guys who play at this limit. Okay, so for now um, there are two hands, not too much uh, you could say there, there's not too much action, not too much information, but still this is worth to notice that the guy on the left raised from the bottom and uh, from a small blind, so he might be on a bit aggressive side. Still with 9-4 offsuited, um, I think it's okay to just limp, but open falling wouldn't be a mistake if uh, he is an aggressive guy, it won't be profitable if we play this hand out of position. So I'm totally okay with uh, just folding this hand preflop. But definitely raising with queens and the guy on the left just called. So he led with um, this flop. And when you think closer about what cards small blind, what cards people are calling on, on small blind, there are plenty of, uh, of cards that are connected with 10 and 9, like Queen Jack, Queen 10, Queen 9, 7, 8, 7, 9, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10 Jack, 10 Queen, 10 King, King, Queen, King, Jack, King, like plenty of them. So definitely this is a moment where we should value race, as there are plenty of weaker cards that might call us. And we are in position, the board is wet, so the race should be around 3x. 3x are the, mm, the race. I don't mind 110, I don't mind 130 or 40. I went for 115, totally okay. He calls and the turn uh, brings an 8. So he checks and still, like right now, only hand that beats me is the queen jack. So... Mm, and 10 8 I believe, but these cards might actually fast play um, on the flop. And there are plenty of open-enders, so definitely simplest uh, simplest solution, just move all in on this, on this turn. I did so, and he folded. So pretty interesting, he led on the flop, called the race, but folded on the turn. So what did he have? It looks like 9, maybe a weak flush draw, maybe a weak open ender, no, not really, I don't think so. There are not many weak open enders, like King Jack, he would call, I assume, Jack 7, Jack 6 he can't have, Jack 7 is straight, so probably not, ma not many open enders, looks like a 9. So worth to note that this guy is done betting, um, his second purse or something that actually hit the board. So. In future, how do you perceive this opponent if he won't dunk bet? He will just check. Weak or strong cards? Weak, because we assume he will bet by himself with his second pair or top pair or something that, that, uh, that can call a raise. Mm -hmm. Next hand, they folded. This is important. To note that small blind isn't the guy who play a lot of out of position. With pocket sixes, I think it's okay to just flat call preflop and just give a chance to big blind to basically race over our limp. Then we have great situation to basically race over um, his isolation. Basically limp race all in. And the advantage of it is we won't see the flop. And playing post off with pocket sixes isn't too good, as there are plenty of over cards, we are out of position, so we don't really want to play this post flop. Board is paired, so our opponent needs to have a piece of this board to continue, so definitely betting. I don't want him a uh, free chance to hit a pair on the turn. But he called, and right now i'm sure he has a nine he has a queen he has also got shots in in his calling range and i don't see any of these cards folding to my turn bet uh, so checking is totally okay and i hope he will go to the showdown with his missed gut shots like 10 8 uh, king 10 
king jack or something like that and my pocket sixes will win i checked he checked back and the turn is t and the river the 10 on the river is terrible as it completes every single gut shot like 10 8 jack 8 uh, whatever now we don't beat anything so check folding is the best play Small blind linked and with king jack definitely isolating uh, 50, 50 chips is perfectly perfect I wouldn't isolate to 60 as I want him to call with weaker cards obviously because if I raise too big he might fold his weak kings like king 5 or king 6 or weak jacks so 50 is perfectly fine but against dunk but gem we can't do much and this is also very very important for future this guy is dunk betting as well so against people who are dunk betting we should see bet way more often as I don't believe he would just dunk bet like that with air cards. I'm sure he did it with a queen or some kind of good draw or maybe with six. But he definitely had something. So if he dunk bets when he has, then if he checks, we he, he usually has nothing. So against these opponents, we should see bet way more frequently. 9-6 still worth limping, as uh, our opponent didn't isolate us like last time. So we can play for a cheap price and, and, and see the flop. He checked. And let's try to win a pot with a small bet, just mean betting. But against the race, can't do much, just playing solid. Weak ace, still raising the flop. So my opponent checked. So this is a perfect spot to see bet. I believe he would just dunk bet if he has a jack or a good draw. So betting a half pot as a standard is perfectly fine. He calls. The turn is an ace. Okay, so if he just check calls on the flop, it totally looks like a weak gut shot, maybe a 4. Mm, yeah, probably weak gut shot, 4 or 5. So his range is pretty weak. So on this turn, even though we hit a pair, we shouldn't bet too much. We should try to um, convince him to call. So betting something like 60, maximum 75, should be, should be the best. Oh, so definitely this bet is definitely too big. I think I will fold four or hand or a card like six, eight, um, or seven, eight from from his range, and he folded. So basically, this uh, this bet is too big. Button limped, and with pocket freeze, moving all in is standard. We don't want to play this hand post flop, and it plays very well uh, pre flop. Even if Ace King calls us, against Ace King we have 50% of equity. So this is totally okay. Worth to see what happened on the on hand. Pretty pa pretty passive. With King we're checking. Our opponent checked the flop. So, on the, so we were on the turn, though the board is pretty drawy, and we're the, we had the topper. So definitely we should bet. But how much? It all depends on the structure. And as the structure is pretty wet, our, po our sizing should be at least a pot size bet. That's what I did. And he called. The river is a 9, and basically mm, plenty of draws missed. The only hand that improved are the 9s. And to be honest, I don't see many 9s in bottom range. I think he would bet them on the flop. So basically right now on the river, we have two options. We could bet and basically get some calls maybe from 8, maybe from 6. Or we could check and basically give our opponent chance to bluff with his missed draws. Like random 10xs, um, random diamonds and so on. So I decided to check and he checked back with king 4. So this is very important information that this guy just checked the flop with a top pair. So he is a, he is pretty passive, he is a type of slow player guy. And he didn't value but the river. So yep, next hand, deuce 7 offsuited, mm, we limped twice and he didn't isolate us uh, any. Time. So, I don't mind limping this hand, although folding wouldn't be a mistake. Mm -hmm. Pot size bet. So, this guy 
checked previously and then folded and now he bets with a pot size bet so he has de he definitely has some uh, sizing tells uh, he, when he's betting he's mainly betting for value and he's betting on the big side button limped and we have great odds we only need to be good at 17 percent of the time so definitely limping queen five and here I decided to dunk bet as I don't I don't think button would limp with ace nor nor big blind would just check while uh, facing two limps so I treat this ace as a one <laughs> so basically right now I feel I have two over cards with a gotcha and um, I decided to bet I really like this bet also the advantage is there are if, even if my opponent calls me on the flop and I think uh, he has a deuce or a free, there are plenty of turns or, or which are over cards. So I can second barrel or third barrel almost on every single card. Big blind calls and the turn is a jack. So obviously an over card. If I think my opponent has a deuce, three, four or five, nothing, uh, nothing else to do but, but bet. And I think betting uh, like 60 is is enough that's what I did he calls and the reverse is six so again um, my opponent just called I think he has deuce three four or five and this over card is definitely a great one to put the pressure of my opponent and here betting 150 or even moving all in as uh, pot size is close to um, like close to stack size of my opponent to basically maximize the fold equity from from a free and that's what I did and he folded yeah very nice six seven uh, my opponent is on seven big blinds so um, Matma from the mathematical point of view it's an easy all-in limp also is uh, is an option it's low variance and it's way simpler and way easier way to win a pot just limping investing half bb pre-flop one bb on the flop no variance, no luck, no problems. Ace King, my opponents are on nine big blinds, so we can easily just move all in. As if we move all in, they will call me with plenty of dominated ace highs, king highs, broadways, and so on. So the guy did with queen jack and better hand held. So we're heads up. Small blind limped. We have second pair. So with second pair, it's easy, easy play to just call. And on the turn, he bet a pot size bet. So, as we noticed pre-flop, he was a kind of passive guy who was giving up. And uh, as I said, he had, he had sizing tells. So right now with a second pair, I think um, this is not a great turn for him to bluff. So. I don't mind just giving up and going for a hero fold with my second pair. Nice. Pocket tens definitely raising as a standard. He calls and moved all in mm, on a king on a king board. So pretty problematic. As we saw previously, he went for a dunk bet shove as well. Mm, here. Let's let's think with what cards he might just move all in like that with king or five like I think with five for sure But what actually what fives he has? Let's think about offsuited cards Deuce five no five three no five four probably I'm not so sure five six definitely five seven yep, but five eight five eight not five nine no five ten no jack five no queen five no king five yes but with two pairs, I don't think so he would move all in. Ace five probably would move all in. So basically there are not too many fives, only uh, four, five, five, six, and five, seven. And kings, king three, king four, king five, king six, king seven, king eight, king nine, king 10. So there are plenty of these. So actually, I don't mind folding here as he just moved all in for twice of the pot. And that's what I did, very nice fold. Very solid. My opponent folded from small blind. And we're on 12 BBs. 
in resident jack deuce mm -hmm. pick calls and checks so again we have great opportunity to see that as if my opponent dunk bets with top pair we have great fold equity here so betting just fit me and this is enough he moved all in can't do much with 9-5 and his king just been raising and he moved all in i call easy game it's a game of patience thank you very much guys for watching and good luck at the table